All right. Good day, everyone. Welcome to APU, an industry career live webinar session. My name is Eve. I'm from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation, APU, and I'm your host for today, guys. Uh, and today's session is Ecosystem of the Creative Industry. Today is already our second session of the live uh, webinar sessions. And just in case if you have missed out the previous session, which by the way, were super informative, please feel free to visit our Facebook page and our YouTube channel to replay them. Uh, also, uh, just to remind you guys, we also have uh, uh, one more day to come besides today until 20 June, which is tomorrow. And a lot of interesting and useful topics will be covered. Uh, a full list you can check on our website, by the way, which is apu.edu.my. So please stay tuned. We also have a lot of updates and news on our Instagram and other social platforms. So make sure you follow us everywhere. Also, while waiting for more people to join our live session today, I would really like to invite you to our open day, e-open day. Uh, you can reach out to us through our website, uh, which I just mentioned, uh, and our counselors will be happily uh, guiding you through all the pathways available for your future study and also the way of becoming a part of our big APU family. Uh, for more information and updates, please don't forget to visit our Facebook page uh, and our website. So, uh, guys, I think we can start over and uh, let me introduce you uh, two extremely creative gurus, Mr. Edwin and Mr. Mrs. Christine. So give me just a second. And here you go, guys. Hello. 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 Nice to meet you virtually, at least for now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Eve. Glad to meet you as well, Eve. All right. So I will just leave you two and I will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eve, for that uh, introduction uh, to the webinar series uh, that APU has been uh, running and uh, definitely for your support uh, for the school as well. And to the wonderful audience who have joined us today uh, in this beautiful Saturday afternoon, um, I welcome you all for this session. And uh, today in this session, um, we will look into the entire ecosystem of the creative industry from art to how it is intertwined between technology, you'll be able to find out what are the possible solutions creative skills can provide in the various industries. The reason COVID-19 has impacted us uh, in different ways, our, uh, as far as the creative industry is concerned, it has opened up a, a new brand of uh, avenues, a new uh, opportunity for a lot of creative uh, industries to come into come into the picture come let's find out how you can pick up the skills to which to and to find out which industry that you can apply uh, into when you come into this uh, in, into this creative industry uh, before i move on i'd like to introduce myself i'm uh, edwin a lecturer and program leader for the visual effects as well as the digital film programs at apu and i uh, I've been both into industry as well as um, um, academic for the past uh, 15 years. And my industrial experience has been more into film and television production. And of course, uh, uh, into academician, into the visual uh, communication and uh, VFX uh, studies. And also, uh, I'm the academic manager, academic manager for the School of Media Arts and Design. Today with me uh, is Ms. Christine. Hello, Ms. Christine. Hi, thanks, Edwin. So uh, welcome, everyone. So my name is Christine. So I'm the program leader for industrial design program. And uh, previously, I've uh, worked at, um, as a lecturer. My um, four area will be a 3D specialist in the ID and multimedia program. And I've worked as a business developer manager for content industry as well. OK, so let's get started. Yeah. So good art is a talent good design is skills. So what's the difference between an artist and a designer? Yeah, perhaps uh, these questions always pop up yeah, when, when the students want to do design, okay? So when we talk about designer, they actually solve a problem and they provide a solution regardless in any field they are in. 
Yeah. And the final output, right, will actually send the same message to everyone. Whereas um, if you're an artist, when you create a piece, it usually based on the artist's thoughts and philosophy. And the final out output will actually send different message to any everyone, depending on how you look at the output. Out, out, output yeah? So how big is this um, creative industry? Yeah, We are actually exposed to um, outputs from creative industry on a 24-7 basis. All right, so just take a minute and look around you. Yeah, there's easily more than five items around you that is born out of this industry. According to um, one of the designers, Karim Rashid, it says that we are exposed to more than a few hundred items in our daily lives. Yeah, from phones, laptop, television, furniture, clothes, watch, mouse, or remote controls. And if you take another minute to think about the five things that you have done, and that is related to stuff or content output. For example, what is the last movie or series you have watched? Um, social media advert that's popping out or any games that you have watched rec uh, played recently. So these are all created by the talent from the creative industry. Let's look at the broad picture of the uh, whole industry. Yeah. So if we really need to categorize them, right, there will be actually four core areas of the the area, so it will be the media, functional area, cultural heritage, and arts. And these four core areas, right, does not just apply to Malaysia. I would say it would be majority for growing countries in the creative economic sectors. Okay, let's look into each section and see what four core areas are about. Yes, indeed, these four core core areas uh, become a very integral part in the creative industry. Typically, when people may view the creative industry as something to do with painting, crafts, and music, uh, some will also associate creative industry to be related to areas like fashion, advertising, games, animation, and even performing arts. But uh, in, in, the, in the subset of areas like the media and functional creations, uh, a far more complex network of creative people are involved, especially when it comes to media, functional creations, cultural heritage and arts. You can look, uh, when, when generally when you look into media, it is always equated to entertainment. The media sector basically provides us with daily entertainment, correct? We have been bombarded with a lot of information uh, across um, different mediums that we come across in our day-to-day -day life, be it from your social media, from our television, uh, when you travel in, in you, you, uh, when you come out to your office, you see a lot of transit ads. Everything is a part of the media ecosystem. And especially films and video, uh, audio and video production. Now, online video streaming has been, uh, has actually taken over uh, 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 a part of our life. I believe most of you here, here are actually uh, subscribed to Netflix or Amazon, or now Disney, Hotstar is in Malaysia, correct? So online streaming has been a very um, a part of a day-to-day -day activity in which we watch a lot of films, uh, television series, Korean dramas, and uh, uh, reality shows. Broadcasting and radio has also been uh, 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 growing tremendously, uh, which includes news reporting. Currently, during this crisis period, we have got a lot of uh, news uh, reports, documentaries, live series, and awareness and reach out, uh, reaching out to the uh, public has been through broadcasting and uh, radio. Uh, publishing, websites, magazines, books also have uh, been a very, very integral part of the media environment. Not, last but not the least, games has, has been a, a grown tremendously uh, during the last uh, decade. Mobiles and tablet games Educational games. Games is not particularly only for entertainment, but it has uh, it's it's become a part of the learning and ecosystem as well. Console games as well as PC games. When it comes to functional creations, what is functional creations? Design is not only um, uh, art, art or music, but we come up with uh, designs that are actually useful in our day-to-day -day lives. This part of the sector is in, uh, enabled into our daily lives. 
just like Vishwasin was uh, saying, look around you. There are a lot of gadgets that have been designed to make things life easier for us uh, in our day-to-day -day activities. Regardless, we need it or not. Sometimes we just buy it out of impulse, but um, we keep buying a lot of functional products that we use in our day-to-day -day life. Industrial design and manufacturing are closely connected. So it's not about only designers. We need people to actually manufacture, engineers to actually uh, do the structural design for a product that we are designing. So product designers and electrical engineers, are, uh, engineers are like, they, are in, they should be in a marriage to come up with a very good product. Even if you don't need it sometimes, advertising plays a very, very integral part in our lives. It actually pushes us to buy a thing. Think of one product that you, uh, that you recently bought just because there was a lot of pop-up advertisement that, were, that was coming when you were looking at your Facebook, when you were uh, watching YouTube, correct? So that's how media and our life has been all integrated. As mentioned by Edwin, advertising is there and will always be there to get you to buy more things. Yeah. Yes. So what's, so what's in advertising field? Okay, let's look in into the area, yeah? So in advertising, we cover um, graphic design, packaging, branding, campaign, social media platforms, and other online shopping. It's definitely not a new sector. It's been around for ages, and we have uh, constantly seeing them in TVs, shopping malls, magazine, newspaper, highways, and especially these days in our social media feeds, um, and I think also radios as well when we are driving. So it comes in many forms and ensure that they are there to influence you. Yeah, during this pandemic, yeah, we all shop online. We all order food yes. online. Yeah, and there are times where we put in a certain items in our cart and we have not checked out yet. But after a few push of that promo, you know, promo notice, and we might check out because that, that's a good deal. Yeah, and besides that, um, just on spending money, right? On non-profit organization, yeah, they also need advertising campaign to help promote awareness. I think in uh, MCO 1.0, yeah, there were a lot of uh, people donating to our local zoo because um, they, they, they was in need. So that's actually uh, how they create the uh, materials just to promote the awareness. And lastly, brand campaign. It has definitely evolved over the years. There's no longer a sales girl just giving you tests and trying to get you to buy things. So if you look at the bottom right image, uh, it's an event, I think, um, run by L'Occitane. So they have the whole user experience focusing on user to test your product and understand what is it about, what's the content, conveying the campaign message. So things have changed over the times. All right, let's look into the next field, which is the industrial design field, okay? So industrial design covers from product design, toy design, furniture design, automotive design, sustainable interior accessory, and IoT and 3D printing. You can see that it has branched out into um, other manufacturing sectors, combining traditional and digital technology together. It's no longer just one way pathway. So let's look at an example, okay? So if you have a digital clock, yeah, you still find them in digital hand faces just rather than just the numbers. And you can see uh, over the past few years, it has evolved into uh, even tracking. Yeah, just instead of just telling time, they track your health, track your habits. Um, then they produce items like Apple Watch, Fitbit, gummies, and many more. So if you look at um, kids' products, yeah, toys no longer just be toys. It needs to be made for learning. And if you just look at products, yeah, products no longer just uh, functional items, yeah. It needs to be able to provide a better user experience. And sometimes it's also an indi indication of lifestyle status. Yeah, I just, just, just give you another example, um, door lock, yeah, our entrance door lock. Conventionally, we have a knob, we put in a key and then we turn it open, right? But these days we have the digital version where you have digital password and thumbprint, some even facial recognition. So with that type of system, right, it enables the house owner to track um, the resident movement in a premise. And with this advancement, definitely making our lives better and, and enabling the designers to create better quality um, products, okay? Um, besides that, in this area, we look into uh, audio and video productions, okay? So 
it covers television series, animation series, movies, documentaries, commercial, corporate videos, and music videos. So if we look at um, our own Malaysian industry, uh, it's definitely have grown from Pascal, Dukun, Li Chongwei, Guang. These are actually all locally made and they have mark, uh, made a mark in the international markets. All right. If you have watched the series in Netflix, uh, I think last year, Ghost Bright. So there's a few episodes, right? It's actually involved uh, some Malaysian crew that uh, created that as well. And there are more and more co-production being uh, occurring in Malaysia. For example, in China, yeah, they do a lot of commercial and TV series production in Malaysia during winter. And the crew in Malaysia, right? they are able to converse in Mandarin, making communication definitely a lot more smoother. Yeah. yeah. So let's look at the um, how this creative industry actually works together. Okay. So if you look at the network, right, definitely there's a lot of uh, different groups of people. And for example, a client yeah, who wants to introduce a product in the market. Okay. And just to produce one commercial for that product, it will involve the agency, who come up with a strategy and ideas and then pass it to the production house where the people will look into film and shooting and then post-production who will edit and composite the, uh, the, the, the materials. And then there are times that they will hire maybe a separate animation studio for creating certain animation shots and then uh, passing to the audio house that does the audios and uh, music mixes. So commercial will then, once it's done, right, commercial will then take place in the digital advertising spaces that they keep bombing our social media platform, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and these days I would say TikTok, yeah? And if you look at the other connections uh, for industrial design area, yeah? So industrial design, they, bridges different disciplinary of field, yeah, from engineers, management to designer. So let's say, let's give an example as well. If you look at a smartwatch, yeah, so you have the designers to create the watch, yeah, ensuring the measurements, the fittings, the ergonomics fits the human. And then we have a graphic designer, UI or UX designers, comes up with beautiful graphics and icon and user experience. And then they will work along with uh, software programmers, ensuring that um, the codes works well in the phone application. And then um, definitely the electrical and mechanical engineers will need to look at internal parts, ensuring that the watch is working, yeah, not um, overheated. Okay. Um, there are times where there are special programming teams that give um, provide better security features. For example, fingerprint uh, print sensor or face recognition technology, which is pretty common these days. So once all these are tested, right, the final product will then be pushed out. Then the advertising team will come in to promote and customize packaging and that will be required for um, the customer's unboxing experience. So that's how these three areas uh, work together to just to push up one product. Okay, and besides that, you actually could see that the function creation and the uh, media sector actually works together. So for example, in this movie scene, um, Tron, yeah, not sure is how many of you watch it, but yeah, it's a very good movie, so go and check it out. So this includes um, building the sets and expands into uh, fashion design or industrial design, who then can specialize in creating fancy costume and the props. Yeah, once you create this, right, when they do a shoot, right, it's actually cut down the uh, workload in the post-production later. All right. So let's see how COVID has uh, impacted the creative industry. Yeah. With that uh, background on how uh, all uh, the different uh, creative industries are intertwined between each other, uh, if you see, look at that uh, particular chart that Ms. Christine was uh, sharing, all the different departments, different creative industries are are in tandem, they have to work in cohesiveness. But uh, when it comes to the current situation that we are uh, now in, which is our COVID-19, which has impacted our lives uh, in different ways, has this actually impacted the creative uh, industry? Let's see, uh, let's let's add some more discussions on this. Now, when uh, a, a thing like a pandemic, like COVID uh, uh, came in, we had a lot of problems. And for creative uh, industry, or creative uh, people or for designers, when there's a problem, they see it as an opportunity. 
And yes, the creative industry saw this as an opportunity and we had been actually um, creating a lot of content to enable us to overcome these difficult times. That starts with uh, awareness generation. If you look at uh, the recent uh, years, last, last, last year and uh, currently this year as well, uh, there were a lot of digital uh, awareness campaigns uh, that the advertising industry actually brought out to create awareness, to make people better informed so that they have better care and prevention during this pandemic period. And if you would uh, observe, uh, public design spaces also took a different uh, pathway during this pandemic period. Now that we had to maintain social distancing, we had to redesign the way in which we approach towards public um, be it transportation or um, when you go to a restaurant, the arrangement of shares has to be modified. And just to know, you know, our students from the industrial design also created, took this as an opportunity and came up with a, uh, a furniture design called as even to ensure that the social, uh, social distancing as well as uh, it's very compactable and uh, uh, portable. Yeah, so we see this as an opportunity. So the creative industry has grown multiple times during this period of uh, uh, pandemic. Digital content development, again, has increased uh, and uh, in, in the consumption of entertainment, we have consuming a lot of uh, digital content. So uh, like but to go back to relate to how much of uh, uh, television time that we have uh, during a day, a recent study shows, shows that the average Malaysian actually <laughs> Uh, watches five hours of um, TV time during a day. Previously, it was only three hours, but during this last two years, it's been um, five hours per day that we are spending time in front of the television. Now, that data, this is the data from July 2020 from uh, Global Web Index. The recent one is not yet, uh, available. So the increase in online and digital activities, you can see the numbers there. 54 percentage uh, more, we have been watching more shows, films and streaming services. Spending longer time in social media, around 43 percentage. Listening to more music and streaming services has gone up 37 percentage. Even uh, listening to more pod podcasts has increased 15 percentage during this time and games, 35 percentage. So, so much of digital consumption is happening. So we need people. There is a demand for people to create this content that the consumers need at this point in time. A few more uh, uh, valuable data. This is up in Jan 2020. Social media use around the world has gone up by 4.20 billion uh, times. Social media uh, users, uh, global across global population has gone up to 53.6 percentage. To narrow down even further on people spending more time on devices, you can see that smartphones has always been the topping, uh, topping on the list and followed by laptops. And laptops specifically because of the uh, current scenario in which uh, we are in. Even if you take this particular webinar session that is happening, we are, uh, we are connected because of this digital gadgets which are available for us to connect to the wider audience across the world. And digital learning, Universities that are adopted to online learning, and for that, the usage of uh, laptops or smartphones have multiplied um, many uh, times. Again, uh, some uh, data on social media as uh, overall uh, usage has gone up by forty to fifty percentage uh, uh, in, in the in the in the moment of time that we spent uh, uh, spend on social media, be it Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, and online games as well, 30 to 39 percentage of increase. On video watching on uh, streaming platforms, 20 years ago, if you just look back, if you wanted a home entertainment, you will always depend upon a broadcasting uh, uh, a studio or a te uh, television, and you need to rent a VHS to actually watch a movie. Then came in the cable TV, which um, actually provided more options at all these contents were dictated by somebody. You did not have a choice to actually choose what you wanted to watch. But now with streaming um, platforms available, there is literally unlimited entertainment. You can choose what you want. You can choose what time you want to watch uh, your preferred 
movies and television shows. So that's the that that's a big changeover uh, in the way um, content is consumed and. Now it's more of the customer's preference in, in terms of the uh, digital ecosystem. The customer is the center point. On that note, design plus good service backed up with science and technology gives a wholesome experience to our customers. So this is, is what as content creators we need to uh, strive for. Science backed up with technology, the good design thinking skills and a better service promotion from uh, after sales service is what gives a, a customer all some experience so this includes engineers designers programmers brand experts uh, AR, uh, vr and ux as well yep so that's how this ecosystem has actually um, moved into to make a, a good experience for our customers so what, uh, what are the most demandable job positions currently available? Ms. Christine. Yes, we have actually categorized into two main categories. So let's look into the first um, category here yeah, under the demand job position, hands-on creative job. So if you look at the list, uh, like we mentioned, these are just not um, the end. There's longer name for it. You, you can just go and check it out. So um, we're going to look at um, graphic design, animation editors, UI, UX, and CAD designers. Just gonna elaborate a bit of that, okay? So graphic designers has been definitely a great demand during the pandemic sessions, as every single company or businesses would want their products and promotion to be seen or pushed out in social media constantly. And graphic designers job scope has evolved as well, yeah, throughout the years. So they're looking at candidates to be able to do a little bit of animations on the graphics along with good writing skills so that they can push out some social media posting yeah and if you look at the animation industry yeah or the animators yeah it's definitely a great demand in malaysia back in 2018 right um there there are about 372 animation studios so imagine now that there might there must be an increase as well and each of these studios are creating various content for different market of the world. So definitely animators position is in demand, uh, following by um, positions like editors, where there are people who place in audio captions, ensuring timing and space suit the entire storytelling. Yeah, and not nevertheless, the um, UX UI designers, another boom during the pandemic, because every company would want to create their own app ensuring the users have a good uh, process system when they order their food or shop online, yeah, making system and processes more efficient. Lastly, for cat designers, it's not something that is new. Yeah, it's been in the market for a long time. So instead of just designing beautiful products, they need to make, make sure that the design yeah, could then translate into producing accurate cat design for manufacturing purpose. Yeah, so these are all the hands-on creative job. And let's move on to the creative management job. So it covers from producer, production manager, production coordinators, film directors, marketing managers, and so on. Okay, so these are the position, right? Um, usually non-artists. Yeah, but majority of them come from a design background. And this managerial position allows one to cross in different sectors of the creative industry. Okay, so for example, right, um, a film producer, yeah, it is possible for the film producer to become an agency AV producer or even going to the post production as a studio producer. Okay, and for VFX supervisors, yeah, they would have started from the hands on creative job first. So starting as an artist. And then moving into different departments, gaining enough experience, then they will start to lead different teams. So that's how the creative management um, job fields are. Let's look into the animation and VFX industry. Yeah. So it has two main categories, the pre-production and the post-production. So these are just um, some of the position is there. So if you look at every sectors, right, there's actually um, their own hierarchy and job titles. So in this industry, especially if you look at the movies yeah, at the end of the show, 
if you watch the end credits okay so we probably might have watched it because we want to wait for the post credit scenes right for example in the avengers movies so there's this very long list of um names post, uh, jobs and departments so it's actually showing that to create one movies right it involves many 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 peoples or talents in creating it and this list right often is not complete all right so if you look at in malaysia all right so what are the jobs that are still for hiring in the animation and vfx industry okay so we these are all updated since june 2021 yeah so we have um, companies from bandai silver and anymore mirai and fly studios and many more they are still in demand in hiring so constantly they are taking in uh, um, designers or artists for this field and if we will look at um, industrial design and digital advertising so uh, we have companies like Purodua, Daikin, Interseed, um, DK Ladder. They are still taking in industrial designers to design um, seats for automotive design or to become an R&D designers. Or if you look at digital advertising um, field, we have uh, Unilever, we have uh, Desu and Wonderport. They are still hiring media planner, advertising um, manager. So, there are still jobs available in Malaysia. So students just need to really um, look out for it and start applying. Okay, so let's look at what yeah. companies that are out there in this industry. Yes, exactly. Now that we we have understood what are the different positions available in the market and what are the um, key areas in which you can actually branch out to the industry. Um, just like, like to give you a, a hint of all the Malaysian, um, Malaysian companies that have been contributing towards the creative industry. Um, so starting with uh, uh, Silver Ant uh, is established uh, in two decades ago. Uh, two decades ago, they've been a very uh, uh, pioneering in the animation production. So Silver Ant has been uh, uh, a, a company that has been uh, supporting uh, the students from a School of Media Arts and Design for internship program, programs, as well as uh, for job opportunities at this point in time. So they have uh, worked with a lot of local and international markets such as Konomi, Nintendo, and Sega. Another uh, um, key uh, industry player uh, in Malaysia is Anima Point as well, established in 2013. They have a joint venture uh, uh, between award-winning animation studio from Finland and the crea and Creative Media Point from Malaysia. So it's a joint venture um, that has been very, very well established uh, in Malaysia and constantly working with a lot of uh, international and local clients as well. And uh, Lemon Sky from Shah Alam, founded in two, two, uh, 2006, uh, 2006. Lemon Sky has been a forefront for animation and video games industry uh, with uh, 300 creative talents. So that's the volume of the people who are employed at uh, Lemon Sky. And they work uh, with uh, big giants like uh, Blizzard uh, Entertainment, Naughty Dog, 2K Games, Bandai Namco, EA Sports and Games, Microsoft Studios, and Sega. So they believe uh, in a passion called make good art. So that's what that uh, drives them. Uh, passion Republic, another um, another animation studio production house, which is based out of Puchong, um, founded in two, uh, 2009 by a group of young animators. So fresh out of uh, university, they wanted to start off uh, a company. So they, uh, they went ahead and started uh, this company. and. Uh, one of the major games that they have contributed towards, uh, uh, which put actually Malaysia in, in a greater ma map of uh, uh, the production world is uh, Uncharted uh, 4, Injustice 2, League of Legends and Spider-Man games. And uh, when it comes to movies and to the Malaysian market, you cannot skip uh, Thor films, uh, who are based out of Cyberjaya. Uh, so it's again a joint venture uh, co-founded by John Hughes and Mandeep Singh and Walt Jones. Uh, so they have been um, contributing towards creating um, uh, different movies. The one that you see on the image uh, is one of uh, a big budget movie that came up in uh, India, southern part of India, called Bahubali. And so this particular production company played a vital role in the VFX uh, for uh, for the movie called Bahubali. And uh, again, Pixel Post uh, for Daman Sara, a post production company, um, they won the best film FX uh, award uh, for Dungun. And they have been very supportive with various uh, educational institutions, especially with us uh, at the School of Media Arts and Design. And uh, they have been 
um, providing a lot of opportunities for our students. VHQ, um, worldwide, um, so they're really worldwide and they we also have base in uh, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Jakarta, Beijing, Taiping, and Hong Kong. The studios uh, work collaboratively on delivering digital content. So they are more focused on creating digital content for, televi uh, for television, uh, commercial series, and as well as uh, films. And uh, also we have uh, Bandai Namco. Uh, it's a very new setup, uh, a newly set up Malaysian studio, uh, which has become a hub for visual art production region. Um, and has been partnering with our neighboring countries uh, to get this animation industry into the global uh, market to put our Malaysian uh, creative industry on the global map. Also, uh, Ministry XR, uh, we, with which APO has been closely working with, uh, creates a lot of uh, uh, AR, VR, and XR uh, content for which we need a lot of uh, animators, 3D modelers, uh, and um, rigging artists, virtual reality is it will take over is slowly taking over a larger aspects of our life and it will be uh, a major major contributor towards uh, how we uh, use technology to our uh, our advantage oh, yes see? Yeah. yeah, over for digital advertising, right, we have great global worldwide. So if you look at them, right, um, they have established since 1917 and they have over 100 offices around the world and across 17 countries, Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific regions. OK, so the, the, the branch is actually located at Jalan Tun Sampatan for candidates who like to work with um, different countries or brands. Yeah, this is a pretty much a good companies to join in. And next would be the ADA Southeast Asia. So basically, um, ADA Southeast Asia, right? What, would, what do they do? They actually provide business insights, um, data and reach and advanced analytics, trying to understand the consumer mindset, designing data driven in creative marketing strategy. So what does that mean? Yeah. So I'll just give you an example. Yeah. If the weather is very hot, right? Let's say today, uh, temperature maybe thirty two point something, and everyone's sweating. So they have actually um, gathered that data, and they will push out um, promos or ads. For example, come take this bubble tea from this brand, or anything that you know to make you cool down because of the weather. So that's how data driven creative marketing strategy is okay they also do executing end to end digital marketing solution for growth hacking funnel optimization and goal optimization all right so if we are looking into the industrial design area we have the motorola solution located at penang so in motorola there's two design teams one located in us and one located in penang so um, the company does focus on providing better communication system for various industry so if you look at the image on the right right you can see the walkie talkies no longer is those big and bulky uh, walkie talkie they they are designing catering for different industry to suit their daily life routine all right so Next would be on Expedio Design, a design consultancy firm where they provide solution for design, so, uh, design solutions, um, strategy, design, product engineering, and product development for various industry. Okay. Uh, next, more design. Okay, this is actually a furniture company. They're located in Subang. It's very interesting because they actually started their business through online selling furniture. There's no showroom. Yeah, so back in 2014, can you imagine during that time, they already do online selling furniture. Yeah, I myself, I don't think I will buy a furniture through online during that time, but now maybe, yeah. So from there, almost they started and now they own the largest designer's furniture store in Malaysia, over 25,000 square feet. Okay, so you can find their designs um, in four branches, Subang, Johor, Penang, and Ipoh. So these are all locally designed by our, our own um, Malaysian talent. Okay, so next, 
be uh, looking into Stephanie Lighting, yeah, located in Kuala Lumpur. So Stephanie herself um, is a award-winning designer focusing on light design. And you can see her design in hotels and restaurants. So one of the iconic restaurants I would say would be Nando's. So you can look at the weaving and the lights, right? It's actually designed by Stephanie and her team. And next would be uh, Royal Selangor. Yeah, this is a very familiar name in every household. Yeah, so they have yeah. um, expanded their product line throughout the years. Yeah, catering for younger target audience and collector uh, collectors. So they have uh, definitely collaborate with Disney producing uh, collectible figurines and souvenirs. So we can see the first image there, Star Wars. Yeah, must have for all the Rebel fans. <laughs> and uh, especially the bottom uh, image, the dinosaur collection, stationary collections, is actually produced by our own students during their interns in Royal Salango. So now the, the product is in the market and we're definitely very happy and proud for the students. Okay, so looking at the transportation industry, we have Porodua at Rawang. As I previously has flashed out, they are still looking for hires. Yeah, so um, the market is still there. So don't worry on that. And um, next would be on the sustainable area, Nest Print Works. So this company does a lot of uh, R&D on uh, looking into different materials, sustainable materials. How can we convert and make them into uh, sustainable products? So uh, this, this company focuses a lot on sustainability. And lastly, um, quality. So our students, uh, we, we don't encourage our students to uh, work along in Malaysia. We also encourage them to go outside if there's any opportunity. So quality is, you know, very, uh, quality is near our Malaysia country in Thailand, Bangkok. Yeah, all of us go there for shopping, right? <laughs> so in Kuali, right, they actually, um, what does the company do? They produce um, very cute and nice product. Not no, not only nice, but it's functional. So, so it's basically they design a lot of lifestyle product. And uh, even Malaysia, we do sell their product. So it's a pretty interesting company to look into. Okay. So there are many, many, many other companies out there. So from the first column um, for digital advertising area, yeah, you can look into Naga, DDB, Ogilvy, um, Densu, and even Wiseite. And the second column would be for animation candidates. So if you can look at Les Copa, Wow, Young Jam, and Flies. And for VFX, we have Reservoir, Think Tank, PRS. Okay. And lastly, for industrial design, we have Dyson, Panasonic, Samsung, and Modernus. So there yeah. are um, many opportunities out there still. Okay. Yes, exactly. Uh, like Ms. Christine said, um, <laughs> there's quite a lot of opportunities available uh, out there in the market. And the list that uh, we have provided is not uh, exhaustive list, but uh, selected a uh, few. And uh, um, so because of the demand that we saw earlier uh, about the demand for the creative industry, uh, the industrial, the industry market, the creative industry market itself is uh, growing, um, uh, grow, growing across. So uh, uh, a strong uh, sense of uh, positivity that I can share with you is currently as we speak now also our students, close to 134 students from, the, from our school are currently doing the internship uh, with leading companies uh, from a, in animation, uh, visual effects, pro, uh, industrial design, and in uh, digital advertising, they're currently doing their um, internship. Uh, some of them are working from home, but still they, they all of them are uh, uh, working with, uh, closely with uh, these companies, which positively will convert into a job opportunity for them later. Now, now that we understood that there are enough demand for the creative industry, what type of skills do you need to get into this industry? Okay, we need to have a particular set of skills uh, so that's what we're going to understand now. So when it comes to design skill sets, practical skills is what uh, we, we usually talk about. We talk about drawing techniques, uh, marker rendering, digital illustrations, mock-up creation, prototyping, and video production, some of the basic skills uh, that a designer should uh, inculcate. Now, among them will be uh, most four, four prominent uh, prominent skills that you need to acquire when you actually uh, get into the design thinking is communication. Communication becomes a very, very integral part. Problem solving skills, because we, a designer, is a problem solver. Collaborative skills, getting to work with the team, getting to uh, do researches and research along with the team and building a prototype and 
be a little bit of definitely a soft software savvy. You need to be ad, um, adapting to the technology that uh, uh, is changing day by day. So these are the key skills that you need to uh, acquire. And when you think about why do you need to study a design course, uh, we, oh, then when usually we talk about a design course, we always relate it to drawing. Uh, whether okay, do we need to have uh, drawing? It's all about drawing skills. No, not not like that. Uh, it, it's about design. So design is not only about uh, drawing. So design is not easy, but it's it, it's a skill that we need to acquire, and that's where the learning part comes into uh, play. And in this entire process of getting these new skills into uh, in, into into yourself, if you want to get into this industry, one thing that is a key word, which is passion. You need to be passionate towards uh, the 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 choice of choice that you have made, and you need to adapt yourself to a creative changes. In our school, uh, a short glimpse of what's happened, uh, what 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 are the things that happen in our school? Uh, we've given some uh, images for you. So there's uh, a lot of collaborative uh, work, team work done. We use um, latest softwares to actually uh, teach our students. And if you see uh, those images, you can see presentations happening. You see uh, a television studio, a green screen studio, students working with uh, uh, modeling and in a, a product design workshop and a lot of sketching. Yes, definitely uh, it's there. So all these technical skills, along with the software that you see uh, in the right there, uh, it's, again, it's not an exhaustive list of software, but these softwares are the key software that our students learn uh, in our four animation uh, programs. And these are industry relevant softwares. So meaning when you finish your campus uh, education, you can jump directly into the corporate environment. So there is no, um, no adaptation required when you actually move in. And uh, in terms of the design, Thinking. Okay, what is design thinking? Design thinking is a human-centered, cognitive, and practical uh, process. Uh, it is through this uh, process design students will engage through their studies to develop both creative and critical thinking skills. So you need to empathize with the uh, people, understand what is the problem, define it, do a research, do a, do a prototype, uh, create ideas, then create a prototype, test it. And that's an infinity circle. So design is um, design is forever. Design is something that uh, keeps evolving. And finally, on, on, on a simple designer's formula. So what is, if you have to put um, uh, if you have to put a formula for designer? Maybe we can summarize into four key uh, uh, areas: passion, experiment, observation, and portfolio. So passion is a secret ingredient and uh, to get started and sustain in the creative industry. So one thing uh, is don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, constantly upskill yourself by trying, experimenting different tools, methods, softwares. There are many pathways to cross over to different subsectors of the industry. Um, as uh, Dori would say, just keep swimming. Uh, develop good observational skills. Just watch everything that is around you. Uh, Everything that you see can inspire you. The more you see, the more expansive your visual library will be. Build a good portfolio, very important. Gradually uh, be more selective with your works and customize certain works for different uh, purposes. Yeah, so passion, try new things, experiment new things, observe what's happening around you, adapt uh, to the latest technologies and create portfolios that cater to your design path, your design career path. And that's exactly what we uh, at the School of Media Art uh, and Design School, uh, we inculcate to our students. The future of creative industry will require designers to work more with technology. Yeah. So design uh, without technology uh, cannot sustain for a longer time. So design has to go hand in hand with technology and they complement each other. Sectors like book publishing and advertising are uh, already venturing into AR and VR integration. This need for an immersive experience will bring on all aspects of design. So to bring that experience to your, audi uh, to your audience, uh, to the customer, you have to have a lot of design aspects. So we, again, at the School of Media Arts and Design, have started off with this 
intention of cultivating the true spirit of designing with technology was students by infusing traditional art and designing skills with software applications while harnessing communication and critical thinking skills. With IR 4.0, we embrace, embrace the ex exciting challenges ahead to make better things. So that's a goal at the School of Media Arts and Design as we um, inculcate these design skills to our students to our th th with our four programs currently, uh, which is the animation, industrial design, visual effects, and digital advertising. So that brings us to, to a conclusion for this particular uh, webinar session. Hopefully, uh, we have been able to actually give you a, a greater insight on the entire ecosystem of uh, um, the creative industry and how uh, this industry is going to be um, a perennial industry, an uh, industry that is most sorted out, so most uh, demanded uh, industry um, across the years to come. So thank you for the opportunity that you've given. And I believe now over to Eve, and we are open for questions, if uh, there is any question that we can actually share our thoughts on. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. Wow, that was a very informative uh, session. Thank you, boys. <laughs> All right, Thank let's you. see um, what questions do we have. Let me go through. Um, actually, I have one question that um, recently my student asked. I have basically a lot of students asking me this certain question. Uh, during the pandemic, we all know things have changed, obviously. And uh, when you think about design, it's something that um, should involve a lot of hands-on experience, right? So uh, based on online classes, how this was affected, how did it change? Can you guys explain this a bit? Hey, Christina, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, in, in the field of industrial design, I think most of them will wonder because we are the most hands-on uh, um, people, yeah, <laughs> around the world. Exactly. Yeah. So um, basically, um, learning still continues. So um, definitely, there were there was some groundwork being done. So for example, um, on the model making classes, we have definitely um, made it into more home based. So students still needs to do models at home, um, but um, the lecturer wise, we have sought out um, you know certain names of the materials in different countries. They call different things. So we give them a checklist so that they could get their materials. And uh, definitely for um, because of technology, yeah, we have been talking talking about technology. Thanks to that, yeah, 3D printing is very common in every country. So students can do their 3D printing, um, let's say they are in overseas. And for local students, um, they could always send the file over, we could print and we send it back. So um, I think technologies have definitely uh, advanced and make the impossible possible. Yeah. Exactly. So students still still get to do hands on work. Yeah. So so that's how we actually um, made it as a norm as well. Yeah. yeah. Just to add yeah. on to Ms. Christine's uh, thoughts there, in terms of uh, uh, visual effects and animation, I think uh, APU, uh, technologically uh, driven uh, university, has made uh, almost everything possible for the students, even during the pandemic. I could uh, definitely relate this to how a virtual uh, lab system was arranged for students uh, immediately uh, after the lockdown. So now students, uh, yes, they do physically miss being in the lab along with the lecturer, <laughs> chatting with the students, but uh, they have been very, very, um, the virtual lab has been very supportive for the students where uh, they can remotely access from any part of the world to our lab resources and still get access to the software. And uh, uh, same as the remote lab as well. And um, digital learning experience uh, by itself has actually opened up a lot of uh, opportunities for our students where they have recorded sessions so previously it was not the case right so it was all live session and uh, if they need to go and look back into a lecture session uh, there was no recording but now all lecture sessions are recording and uh, students can always refer back to uh, the classes and uh, they can actually refer and learn more so i think the entire uh, the online digital uh, platform of learning has uh, enhanced uh, learning capabilities to a larger extent that that i can definitely say all right yeah thank you so much that makes a lot of sense actually we yeah. got um a really interesting question um let me show it to you guys 
So okay. if a student is weak in drawing, but has a strong interest in media animation, can a student cope with it? That's a really common question that students ask us. Yes. Uh, okay. Christian, can I take that question? Quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. okay, great. Wonderful. Um, okay. A drawing, again, is a skill. Yeah, okay, it's a skill. Uh, I, can, I can relate to students who actually, uh, just like em, uh, Emily there, who came to us stating that, sir, I don't have some great drawing skills, so will I, will I actually excel? And uh, yes, there are students who actually came uh, with uh, weaker drawing skills, but if you look at the entire course and what we do at the School of Media Arts and Design, we uh, the first year is basically about traditional way of traditional art form, and you will be learning uh, basics of uh, drawing skills. For animation industry, I will not say that uh, you don't need a drawing skill at all. Definitely, that if I'm going to say that, I'm, I'm not being honest here. So drawing skills is a must, definitely. So, But that's the exact reason why you are here in the design course. You're here to learn. So we are here to teach you. We are here to impart uh, knowledge to you, handhold you, and guide you. And we start off early. Even before you start your year one, we have a portfolio session portfolio class for sometimes five weeks or eight weeks time, but you actually learn these basics of drawing skills. And then only you progress towards your year, uh, year one of your degree. So Emily, be very confident, not to worry. We are there to help you out in your drawing skills. Yes, you can definitely cope with that and you can excel. As long as, remember the slides, passion is what is important. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. Yeah, like, for example, even when I joined, because I'm also alumni from design school, did I know how to draw? Not even a single line, not even straight. I had no idea. But definitely, if you have a passion, you can do anything. You can conquer any heights. All right, uh, our time is uh, coming uh, to the end. So maybe we can take one last question, uh, which is usually asked as well very often. Uh, I think it's also it should be addressed to you, Mr. Edwin. What okay. is actually the difference between animation and visual effects? Because sometimes students are so interested in both, but they cannot understand mm -hmm. which pathway to go for. Yeah, this this is a very very frequented uh, question. Uh, are animation and VFX are the one and the same? I would uh, say that uh, uh, yes and a no, uh, but. They are different in their own ways, but uh, they coexist uh, in the same uh, industry, uh, and uh, they have to go hand in hand. So animation is more in, uh, more yeah, no. of uh, uh, more of uh, motion graphics, uh, creating pictures, sketches, and uh, animating them uh, to create a, a story. Whereas when it comes to VFX, it's applied on real things, human beings like compositing. You have a live action footage, and then you add. Um, Additional elements, CJ elements, frames, you extend uh, sets, you extend uh, um, or create new environments, unrealistic environments in a 3D environment and sync it along with uh, a live footage. So it's more of a real thing. Whereas animation is more uh, towards uh, uh, creating everything on your own, be it stop motion, be it creating a character. Uh, from your character creation to sketches, everything is in the 2D or the 3D form, and then you animate them to make a storyline, correct? So that that's a quick uh, difference between what animation and VFX is, but both of them uh, require a different uh, level of skill set, uh, skill sets out there. Sometimes it might overlap the, uh, the skill set, but uh, they are definitely distinct, uh, different, uh, approaches towards animation, as well as when you approach towards uh, visual effects. All right. Yeah. Actually, while you were uh, talking, we got another very interesting question, which I cannot ignore. I'll let you guys go without answering. So please, <laughs> please, 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 Miss Christine, uh, could you please answer this question? OK, do we learn how to make product become reality and functionable? OK. Yes. So Yes, in the industrial design course, right, um, we actually teach you the design process and that there's a lot of uh, research being involved so that the design that you create is realistic enough. And it also depends on the brief, yeah? 
there are some briefs that uh, allows you to think further. Maybe it's 10 years or five years ahead. So we also need to catch up with the technology as well. So if you ask me whether you create um, or make the product become reality and functional, I would say yes. Yeah, yes, in a way that um, creating a product needs time. So for example, I think Mr. Edwin has flashed out the furniture design that we actually has won in, um, in our competition. So it has now um, from a concept being uh, collaborating with another company in producing it. So it needs another stage to actually um, test and produce out. Yeah, so it depends on what sort of product we are looking at. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I think we're going to end our beautiful session here. Uh, thank you so much, guys. That was an extremely informative session. And uh, please, uh, our dear viewers, don't miss out our next session of the topic for the future proofing your career in IR 4.0, uh, which is going to be at 2 p.m. And wow, you don't want to miss that. I certainly wouldn't. Also, please stay tuned um, and follow our Facebook page for more updates. Uh, and other updates we have also on our uh, website. And once again, uh, don't forget to uh, visit our APU e Open Day. We are there to assist you guys, to guide you through and help you with your pathways. Uh, also, thank you one more time, Mr. Edwin and Ms. Christine. That was very informative. Thank and thank you all for uh, everyone for your time and for joining us. Uh, for those who just um, joined us today, please don't forget you can uh, rewatch and uh, replay the session uh, on our Facebook page and uh, YouTube for, for sure. Uh, I wish you a beautiful day. Don't miss out our sessions uh, for the rest of the day and also tomorrow. And bye-bye. Hope to see you guys. Thanks. Thank you thanks, so much. Eve. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Yes. Have a beautiful day. Yes. Bye.